Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo, and welcome back to Pokemon Radical Red. I have already played through Radical Red a couple of times with a couple of monotypes and also regular challenges, but today we'll be going through the entirety of this amazing Pokemon ROM hack with fire types. Once again, for the people that don't know what Radical Red is, it's a ROM hack where everything has just been made a lot harder. There's a bunch of added battles, you can capture almost every single Pokemon in this game too, and EV grind is also very easy if you are into that. Before we jump into the video, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite fire type Pokemon is. Mine is Magmortar, but I don't really like Magmortar's shiny though. It could have been a lot better. Let's try to smash 112 likes because that's the number of the fire department and we're definitely going to be needing that. Also, don't forget to subscribe and with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Radical Red with only fire type Pokemon. I decided to name myself Cole because, you know, with Cole you can make nice big fires. And my rival is going to be named Water. Since there is only one fire type starter, I'll be going with Charmander here as my first pick. After naming him Nano, we also have to beat up a Squirtle. Which was no problem since he doesn't have water type attacks yet. After winning our first ever trainer battle, it is time for us to get some new Pokemon. But I start off by capturing a Panseer and naming it Ooh because I really don't like its evolution line. We then also capture a Houndour which I name Boris and also a Galarian Ponyta because its typing has been changed in this game to Fire Fairy and not Psychic Fairy. We then go to the entirety of the Viridian Forest and after I get out of there you can already enter Diglett's Cave and over here I found a Numal, which will be very nice against the first gym leader. But before we take on Brock, we have one of the Johto gym leaders to take on, Faulkner. While he led off with a Rufflet, I decided to lead off with my Charmander, and I have Ancient Power on him already, so this Rufflet went down to two of those. I also managed to get my boost, which is going to make this fight a lot easier. The next Pokemon he sends out is Emolga, who is able to hit me with two Shockwaves, but two Ancient Powers also take the Flying Electric Rat down. Down. And the last Pokemon, Corvus Squire, manages to take down Charmander, but my Ancient Power still hits, so I did some chip damage. And in the end, I just swap in Panseer, incinerate it a couple of times, and finally take down Corvus Squire and win against Faulkner. Now, with our Fire type team, we're going to have to take on a Rock type team, which is not going to be easy, but let's see how we can do against Brock. Brock starts off with an Alolan Geodude, so I'm going to be leading with Panseer and go for the Lick because I know he's going to be swapping into Vulpix. I then keep licking while he switches between Geodude and Vulpix, eventually I manage to paralyze the Vulpix but it then takes me down with Ominous Wind. I then go into my Numal to try and hit the Vulpix with Magnitude but he has an answer for this, he actually goes into his Archon. So I decide to swap in my Galarian Ponyta after that and just Will-O-Wisp it so that its attack is crippled and he will also take some extra damage every turn. Since I don't want my Ponyta to go down I then swap into Houndour who gets taken out by a couple of Rock Tombs but I also was able to hit one beat up. Charmander then came in and finished off Archon with Ancient Power he also managed to kill the Alolan Geodude with two Brick Breaks and also hit one last Ancient Power on Vulpix before he finally gets taken down but he has done a good job. So I swap in my Ponyta again and take down Vulpix with Covet. His last Pokemon is Onyx who I can Will-O-Wisp. I can then swap in my Numal who can take two Bulldozers because of the burn and take down the Onyx with some Magnitudes. That's our first gym badge acquired, this battle took me quite a long time to complete, but what do you expect, fire against rock. It wasn't meant to be easy. Moving over to Mount Moon, I capture myself a Roly Coley over there, and while I was trying to leave Mount Moon, we also have a Team Rocket admin battle with Archer. But this battle was very easy, my Charmeleon took down my Diana with Brick Break, Houndour with Brick Break, and the final Pokemon Impidimp with Fire Fangs, so we can continue our journey to Cerulean City. In here we have another scary, scary gym battle against Misty who has water type Pokemon, but first, let's take on our rival. He leads with Curlia, I am able to hit one Flame Charge with Ponyta before he immediately swaps into War Turtle. I then hit a Covet and get taken out by Water Pulse before swapping in Panseer and hit a Yawn so that he will fall asleep next turn because otherwise he is going to sweep my entire team with Water Pulse. He then does fall asleep so I go into Charmeleon, hit 3 Ancient Powers, get one set of boosts and take down the big turtle. And I then proceed to take out the next 3 Pokemon, Curlia, Rockruff and Staravia with Incinerates and Brick Breaks. 
On the next round, I capture a Magby, and I then manage to take down Misty, but my footage for this battle corrupted, but I just got myself a Sunflora and Giga Drain most of her team because Sunflora is actually a fire grass type in this game, so very, very useful. It also got a big buff in special attack. So after getting our second gym badge, without having any proof of it, we go to the SSN and pick up the HM for cut. After doing so, one of my new Pokemon, Sizzlipede, evolved into Scorch. And after this happened, we had to do another rival battle, this time with Brendan, just in front of Diglett Cave. He has a Loudritz, so I decided to lead off with Charmeleon and just Brick Break it a couple of times. Sadly enough, we went down to Hyper Voice, so I swapped in Galarian Ponyta and killed it with Covet. Next up is Cronaunt, which I hit with a Will-O-Wisp, because otherwise it's going to do a lot of damage to my team with Aqua Jet. I then went down to Waterfall, but Sunflora could sweep it up with a Giga Drain. Lunatone then also got killed by a single Giga Drain, and finally Grovile with a Flame Burst. With Brendan defeated, we now have to take on another gym leader in Lieutenant Surge, but Electric-type should be no problem for my Fire-type team. Sadly enough for us though, he led off with a Pinchurchin, and I led off with my Charmeleon, so I went for Flame Burst, but it's part Water Charmeleon type in this game, so it was not very effective and I got killed by Scald. Fortunately, some Flora could just kill it with a Giga Drain right after. He then went into Alolan Raichu and I was expecting a Psychic type move so I went into Hound Doom, but yeah, that didn't happen. He used Volt Switched and Nasty Plot, so my Hound Doom is now dead. But now his Vikavolt is out on the field. So I went into Camerupt and Lava Plumed it twice to take it down. Raichu then finished me off with Psy Shock. So Scorch finished him off with X Scissor. Bolt Hunt then killed me with Thunder Fang so Sunflora could come in and kill him with two Giga Drains. And the final Pokemon was Mega Manectric. He managed to hit two flame bursts on me, but it didn't do enough damage, so my Sunflora once again came out on top, and I do have to say, it might be my most overpowered team member. While taking Drought up to Rock Tunnel, I also found a Darumaka which I captured, and while I was in Rock Tunnel, my Charmeleon evolved into Charizard, and my Galarian Ponyta also evolved into Galarian Rapidash, and I also got myself a Firestone so that I could evolve one of my other Pokemon, Vulpix, into Ninetales, so that we can later on give it the uh, Drought ability, which will make our team a lot stronger. This is how the team is looking like right now. We have Houndoom, Charizard, Sunflora, Ninetales, Rapidash, and Darmanitan. And with this team, we're going to go and take on Erika straight away. This should be the easiest gym batch yet because, you know, fire against grass. Easy win for us. The battle starts off great because my Ninetales can easily one-shot her first Pokemon Rillaboom with Flamethrower, but she then brings in Sudowoodo, which is a grass rock type in this game. So I went into Sunflora to hit a Giga Drain and a Flame Burst, but it did only about half of its health, and we then get taken out by Head Smash. I then try to kill it with Ninetales' Flamethrower, but he goes for another Head Smash and then a Sucker Punch to take down my Ninetailed Fox. Luckily, we still have Houndoom in the back who can finish off the big tree with Flame Burst. Meganium then also goes down to two flame bursts. Venusaur then comes in and she mega evolves it and kills me with Sludge Bomb after I hit it with Flame Burst, but it didn't even do half of its health, only about a quarter. So I brought in Charizard to try and kill it this way by hitting it with even more Flame Burst, but that didn't really work out too well because we got put to sleep and killed by two Sludge Bombs. So I then swapped in Galarian Rapidash to kill the Venusaur with Fire Lash and the final Pokemon Serperior with a Fire Lash and a Flame Charge. That is four Gym Badges acquired, Still, this wasn't an easy battle, even though we had the type advantage. But it's now time for us to take down the Mafia and go and challenge Giovanni himself. Mr. Giovanni here actually leads with a Nidoking, so I'm going to be leading with Houndoom, which was not the best choice because my Flamethrower didn't really take it out and we got destroyed by Earth Power. So I then brought in Ninetales, set up the sun, kill the Nidoking with Flamethrower, and also the next Pokemon, Hunchcrow with Flamethrower. He then brings in his big beast, Mega Kangaskhan, and with a single fake out, my Ninetales goes down. So I bring in my Charizard, hit two more Flamethrowers, and take down the Kangaskhan. He then has a regular Rotom, so no Wash Form, no nothing, but sadly enough, our Flamethrower doesn't do enough damage, and a Shadow Ball finishes off Charizard. But luckily for us, Galarian Rapidash can come in and sweep up the Rotom with Fire Lashes, and the last Pokemon in with two covets. This gives us the Sylph scope and access to the Pokemon Tower where we have to rescue Professor Fuji. I also capture myself a Cubone in there because I can evolve it into a Lolan Marowak later. And we also get a Lampent so we can get a Chandelure later. 
After doing so, we also defeated Morty in a battle to get the Shadow Ball TM. So now it's time for the 10 year old kid to go and save a corporation of millions and millions of dollars because they're getting attacked by the Mafia. But before we take on the Mafia, we have to take on another 10 year old boy. The battle starts off bird versus bird, my Charizard versus his Staraptor. I go for an ancient power, but he U turns out in Darmanitan immediately. I hit another ancient power, but get taken out by Rock Slide after that. So I then go into Houndoom to try and hit a Fiery Wrath, but he predicts that and goes into Electivire and kills me with Mac Punch the turn after. So I bring in my own Darmanitan and kill Electivire with Fire Punch, Staraptor with Fire Punch 2, his own Darmanitan then comes out, I hit one more Fire Punch before going down to Flare Blitz, so my Galarian Rapidash can come in, finish it off, I then go into Ninetales to set up the Drought again because I need to be able to outspeed all of his Pokemon from now on, and he goes into Jump Bluff. Jump Bluff takes down my Ninetales with double edges, so I go back into Sunfora to kill the Jump Bluff with Flamethrower and the final Pokemon Mega Blastoise with two more Giga Drains. That's our rival battle out of the way, normally we would get a Lapras now but sadly enough Lapras isn't a fire type so we're not using it. Before we have to face Giovanni we have some help from Brendan to take down two admins because we definitely couldn't have done this ourselves. After he gifts me his Trico I can now be happy and take on Giovanni again. The Giovanni battle actually starts off pretty easy because I can one shot his first Pokemon Hippo down with my Sunflora Seed Flare. On Excadrill I got a lot of luck because I hit it with a flamethrower but it brought it down to his Focus Sash but with the burn damage it goes down. He then brings out his biggest threat right here, Garchomp which kills two of my Pokemon with Earthquake, Houndoom and Ninetales but I was able to set up the Sun so I can bring in Galarian Rapidash, then hit it with a Will-O-Wisp and also go down to Earthquake. Then go into Sunflora to finally kill Garchomp with two more Giga Drains because he can't one-shot me anymore. He then brings out Mega Kangaskhan who kills me with a single Body Slam because my Giga Drain didn't do enough damage. My Charizard could hit a Flamethrower but then got killed by two Body Slams because he managed to paralyze me on the first one, outspeed me on the second one and then take me out. And ultimately my Darmanitan can then come in and kill Kangaskhan and the final Pokemon Poltegeist with Fire Punches. We can now get ourselves the Master Ball and also the opportunity to coat and take on the 5th Gym Leader Sabrina in a double battle. She's going to be leading with Hadreen and Indeedee and she's going to want to set up the Trick Room, so I'm going to be leading with Freddy and Ninetales. So that I can set up a Drought and manage to kill the Hatterene in just one hit with Flare Blitz from Freddy. I also managed to do some chip damage with Flamethrower on Indeedee before I get hit with an Expanding Force, which manages to one-shot Freddy. I then bring in Houndoom and they bring in Grodon, so I go for my Fiery Wrath to take down Indeedee and do some chip damage on Crawdon with Flamethrower from Ninetales 2, but the Crawdon goes for Liquidation and takes down my Houndoom in the first turn that he's out on the field. She then brings in Conkeldur and I bring in my Sunflora to hit it with Seed Flare and kill the Crawdon with Flamethrower. The Conkeldur then hits my Sunflora with Drain Punch getting all of its HP back and they also bring in Gardevoir next turn. My Sunflora hits one last Seed Flare before going down by the Mega Gardevoir's Expanding Force. So I bring in my last two Pokemon Charizard and Rapidash. Charizard kills the Gardevoir with Flamethrower and I set up a Swords Dance with Rapidash as well. They then bring in their last Pokemon, Porygon 2, with Eviolite, so it's going to be very bulky. But with a single play rough, my Rapidash can now one-shot Conkeldur, the Porygon takes down my Charizard with Thunderbolt, and I can finish off Porygon with a couple more Fire Lashes. So we now have 5 Gym Badges, so let's move on over to Fuchsia City to meet up with Koga. For this battle, and for all of the upcoming battles, I decided to swap out my Ninetales for a Torkoal with Drought, because I needed a little bit more bulk on the team. He starts off with a Boom Bursting, Swellow, so I'm going to be swapping out my Torkoal for Charizard turn 1 and let my Charizard go down. With the Sun up, I then bring in Sunflora with Chlorophyll so that we can outspeed the Swellow and kill with a single Fiery Dance. She then has a Drapion which always uses Wicked Blow so I'm going to have to swap in my Torkoal here. I then just have to hit it with one Inferno, which brings it down to red health. With the burn damage, because Inferno always burns, he is going down in just one hit. He then goes into Dragapult, and I have to sacrifice another Pokemon to keep my Torkoal alive, so I'm going to be sacrificing my newly acquired Chandelure. After doing so, I bring in my Rapidash, which is now Choice Banded, and kill it with Play Rough. 
They then bring in their Mega Toxtricity or Gigantamax Toxtricity, however you want to call it, and I decide to swap out because I'm locked into play rough and go into my Torkoal to set up the sun one last time. I then get taken down by Overdrive, go back into my Rapidash, hit it with a Fire Lash, but he then brings in his Ash Greninja, which kills me with a single Water Shuriken. Luckily, we still have our Water-type killer on the team, so Sunflora comes in, kills the Greninja with Giga Drain. His last Pokemon is a Selgor, I know it's going to outspeed, me and go for Sludge Bomb, so I go into a Alolan Marowak to take it and then finish it off with Flare Blitz. You know how we've met Brendan a couple of times in the past? Well, it's time for us to take out his counterpart, May now. So let's see what her team's looking like. She leads with a Soul Rock, which in this game, sadly enough, still hasn't been changed to Fire type, so I'm still going to be leading off with something that's not very effective on it, but can still two-shot with Flare Blitzes, my Alolan Marowak. Her Flygon comes out next turn and finishes me off with Earthquake. So I swap in my Charizard and go for one Heat Wave before going down to Draco Meteor. And then I go into Galarian Rapidash, which I should have done before, and I finish off the Flygon with Play Rough. And also kill the incoming Manectric with a single Play Rough. I also hit the Relicath with one last Play Rough before going down to Waterfall. I also bring in some Flora after that and kill the Relicath with a single Giga Drain. At least that's what I wanted to do, but she swaps in Blaziken who takes the Giga Drain actually not too well. I then go into Torkoal because I don't want some Flora to die here, and he goes down to two close combats before I can bring in Chandelure and take down Blaziken with Psychic. Relicanth then takes down my Chandelure after I hit a Shadow Ball, but some Flora can come in and take down our last two Pokemon with Giga Drain and Fiery Dance. And now it's time for the ultimate face-off of this entire playthrough, the Fire-type Gym Leader versus the Fire-type Player. Let's see who can win. He leads off with a Torkoal of his own, setting up the sun immediately, which is also going to benefit me. So I'm going to be leading with my camera up and take down Torkoal with Earth Power. After Torkoal, it's time for his Sunflora to shine, so I go into my Charizard to take a Seed Flare and a Flamethrower and proceed to then take down Sunflora with Heat Wave. He then has a Typhlosion with the Fire-type Priority ability, so my Charizard goes down to an Eruption. Luckily, I invested special defensively in my camera up so he can take an Eruption pretty well and then hit back with Earth Power to kill Typhlosion. Cinderace then comes in and decides to take me out with Pyro Ball, so that's my camera up gone. For Cinderace, I decided to go into my Galarian Rapidash because I thought it was going to go for High Jump Kick, and I went for some Play Roughs. Two of them managed to take it down into red health, and together with the Life Orb damage, the Cinderace goes down that turn too. He then finally brings out his Mega Pokemon, Mega Charizard Y, so I'm going to be bringing in my Chandelure, and I managed to take it down with two Shadow Balls, because the first one dropped its special defense, so that I could kill with the second, and the final Pokemon on his team is a Venusaur with Chlorophyll. He takes out my Chandelure, I bring in Torkoal, go for a single Inferno, and with the burn damage at the end, the Venusaur goes down in one hit, which gives us our 7th Gym Badge, so we are indeed the Superior Fire-type. Trainer. Normally you would do the Sevi Islands now or go to the 8th gym immediately, but first in this game we're going to have to take on Cerulean Cave in order to stop Giovanni from getting Mewtwo. Before we reach Giovanni though, we get stopped by two of his admins, Archer and Ariana. This is not a double battle though, this is a gauntlet battle, so we have to take both of them on without being able to heal. So let's see how we can do. The first of the two that we're going to be taking on is Archer, who leads with a Mamoswine. So I'm going to be leaning with my Torkoal and go for the Inferno turn 1, killing it as well. We also got hit with Earthquake, which did quite a lot of damage. But after the Mamoswine went down, he swapped in his Mega Hound Doom, so I went into my Galarian Rapidash. After getting hit with a Fiery Wrath, we hit back with a Play Rough, sadly enough not killing, and the Hound Doom takes me down with Sludge Bomb. We still have the Sun up though, so we can swap in our Sun Flora, which can now outspeed the Hound Doom with Chlorophyll and kill with Fiery Dance. We can then also take down the next Pokemon, Durant, since it's four times weak to Fire type moves, and the last Pokemon on his team is Mew. Mimikyu. I first decide to break its disguise with Fiery Dance while he sets up a Sword Stance, and my Symphora then goes down to Shadow Claw. I then try to bring in Houndoom to kill with a Flamethrower, but we get outsped and killed with Play Rough. So I bring in Torkoal, hit an Inferno, and once again kill the Mimikyu. And since that was his last Pokemon, we can now take on Ariana. She has a Hatterene as our leading Pokemon, and we still lead off with our Torkoal. I try to go for the Inferno, but we get outsped and killed with a single Psychic, sadly enough. So I bring in my Camerupt. 
first turn I go for Magma Storm because I know that my regular camera is going to outspeed this Hatterene. But she sets up a Trick Room, so then I Mega Evolve my Mega Camerupt so that we can become slower, but because of the Trick Room we are now faster and we can kill the Hatterene. The turn after we one-shot Rhyperior with Earth Power, Hunchgrow with Magma Storm again, and our last Pokémon Mega Mawile once again with an Earth Power. And that's Ariana and Archer defeated. So let's move on over to Giovanni. He's already captured Mewtwo sadly enough, but we do get a pretty good Pokemon trainer on our side to take him on, Lance. And Giovanni's two leading Pokemon are pretty weird, a Tapu Lele and a Scrafty. So I'm going to be leading with Galarian Rapidash and Lance has a Dragapult. I immediately start off by one-shotting the Scrafty with Playrough and the Dragapult is able to set up a Reflect and a Light Screen before going down by two Moonblasts by Tapu Lele and I also hit one more Playrough on the Tapu Lele with my Rapidash and Giovanni also has an extra drill. And while I take out the Tapu Lele with another play rough and Lance brings in Dialga, I get killed by a Rock Slide. He brings in his Mega Mewtwo Y and I bring in my Torkoal. I get hit with an Expanding Force, but manage to survive. I hit back with an Heat Wave and the Dialga with a Dragon Pulse on the Mega Mewtwo but nobody dies on his behalf and the next turn my turtle gets taken out. The turn after I bring in Sunfora to kill the Excadrill with Fiery Dance and the Dialga kills Mewtwo with Dragon Pulse. I also got a special attack buff because of the Fiery Dance. So the next two Pokemon that he brings in is Tyranitar and Celesteela who take me and Dialga down. So now it's Lance's Salamence versus those two and Lance manages to take down both of them to win ourselves the battle. This makes Giovanni very sad and very mad so he's going to flee the region, which makes us be able to go down to the 8th gym leader, which is in this game, Claire. And Claire also specializes in the dragon typing, but her first Pokemon isn't really a dragon type, it's an Aerodactyl. So I lead off with my camera up, who can take it down with two steam eruptions. That's the exact reason why I took him with me in this battle, to take down this Aerodactyl pretty quickly. He was actually able to do a little bit more than that, he also managed to burn the Dragonite with Steam Pump. Before I swapped in my Galarian Rapidash, who could then kill the Dragonite with one more play rough. And as she then brought in Magirna, I went back into Camerot to kill with a single Magma Storm. So Camerot was definitely useful in this battle. But her Naganaddle ultimately took me down with Sludge Wave. That's no problem, we have something for poison types. Let's swap in our Marowak. Nope, he is dead to Draco Meteor. Let's go into Houndoom instead. After Mega Evolving him, I could take down the Naganaddle with a single Fiery Wrath, and she then brought in Dracovic. And with one single Fisher's Rend, it takes down Houndoom. So I bring in Torkoal and hit it with an explosion, but that didn't really take it out. Luckily, we still have some Flora in the back, and I kill this Dracovish with two fiery dances because I wanted a special attack buff. Luckily, one of those two got me a special attack buff, and the final Pokemon was her Duraludon, Mega Duraludon, and I took that thing down with one single fiery dance so that we could gain our final gym badge and move on over to the Victory Road. But before we reach Victory Road, we have a couple more battles to do, starting off with the battle against Water. Water, just like always, leads with Staraptor, so I'm going to be leading with my Sunsetting Turtle and kill it with an Inferno. I also added the Speed Boost Blaziken to the team, so he's going to be a very nice upgrade. He then swaps in Hatterene and I swap in my Charizard. Luckily we can one shot with a single heat wave. He then brings in Kartana who can finish me off with Smart Strike. So I decided to bring in my newly acquired team member Blaziken and kill it with a Blaze Kick. I also Mega Evolve, get a speed boost while he goes into his Blastoise so that my Blaziken can how Jim Kick the Blastoise before I get taken out by Aura Sphere. Then I can bring in Houndoom to kill the Blastoise with Flamethrower but his last Pokemon was Darmanitan who I hit another Flamethrower on before going down to Earth. Earthquake. So I swap in Rapidash, hit another Fire Lash, it doesn't quite kill, he goes for Earthquake, kills me, but because of the Life Orb damage he also goes down and that's our rival defeated again. One last battle before we take on the Elite Four and Champion and that's against Brendan. Brendan now has a Deoxys with Focus Sash, so I'm still going to be leading with my Turtle here and I managed to survive a Psycho Boost hit back with an Inferno, and with the burn damage, the Deoxys goes down in one turn. He brings in Landorus, so I go into Houndoom to try and sacrifice him, but he hits our Sphere and we actually survive. We don't outspeed it though, so the next turn he can easily just finish me off. I then bring in Sunflora and finish off Landorus with a Fiery Dance. 
His Galarian Zapdos also gets one shot by Fiery Dance. The Sunlight thing goes away, so I have to swap out my Sunflora before he goes down, and I bring in my Turtle. My Turtle then gets taken out by Liquidation, so I go into Sunflora again to try and outspeed, but because of the Shell Smash, we get taken out by another Liquidation. I bring in my Mega Blaziken after that, and go for the High Jump Kick which one shots, and I also manage to survive a Liquidation, as he brings in his Mega Sceptile. And because of the speed boost, I'm now faster than him and a Blaze Kick critical hit takes him down from full health. The last Pokemon on his team is Jirachi. And somehow the Jirachi survives my Blaze Kick, hits me back with an Iron Head and takes me out. But my Galarian Rapid Ash can finally finish off Brandon with one last Fire Lash, which means that we can now go ahead and take on the Pokemon League. Of course, the first Elite Four member is always going to be Lorelei, and she has two teams, but we're going to be taking on her Ice-type team, not her Water-type team. Her Ice-type team's first two Pokémon consist of Glaceon and Ninetales, so I'll be leading with my Sunflora and my Torkoal. So I start off by taking out the Ninetales with a Fiery Dance, and my Torkoal then misses a Heat Wave on the Glaceon, and I get hit with a Blizzard. Next turn they bring out the Rotom Wash form and I take out Glaceon with another Fiery Dance from Sunflora. My Torkoal can also hit a Heat Wave on the Rotom, but my Sunflora gets paralyzed by Thunder Wave. She also brings out Azumarill, the turn after my Sunflora goes down by Volt Switch from the Rotom. And they bring in their Calyrex. Luckily my Torkoal still hits the Heat Wave doing a lot of damage on the Calyrex and also burning the Azumarill. I then bring in my Mega Charizard Y and I try to hit a Heat Wave, sadly enough the Calyrex dodges it so we're only hitting the Azumarill and both of my Pokemon then get taken out. So I bring out Blaziken and Rapidash to take down both of their Pokemon with Play Rough and High Jump Kick. And their last two Pokemon are Rodom and Abomasnow. My Blaziken kills the Abomasnow with a high jump kick and I hit a play rough on the Rodom Wash, which doesn't kill and the turn after we can hit another one in order to defeat Lorelei and move on over to Bruno. Bruno leads off with an Infernape and I'll be leading off with my Torkoal to set up the Drought immediately. I also have Scorching Sands on my Turtle so I can two-shot the Infernape with two of those. It's Conkeldur then came in and I knew that I had to swap here so I went into Rapidash to take the Drain Punch and hit back with a play rough to easily kill it. His Zacian was able to outspeed my Rapid Ash and kill with Behemoth Blade, so I went into Torkoal who could survive a close combat which was really crucial and I then hit back with a Heat Wave which ultimately took down Zacian. His Como O then took me down with Aura Sphere. I went into Blaziken, high jump kicked him, the next turn he swapped out his Como O for Urshifu who I managed to one shot with Blaze Kick as well. His Como O then came back out, I once again killed him with another high jump kick and a final Pokemon Lucar went down to another blaze kick of mine. And that was Bruno out of the way. The third Elite Four member is the old hag Agatha. She apparently has a Gengar as her first Pokemon, but as I attacked it with my Rapidash, it turns out to be Zoroark, which goes down in just two turns. She then goes into a real Gengar, I don't know if this is a real Gengar, but it mega evolves as I switch in my Charizard, and I get taken out by Sludge Bomb and Shadow Ball, so I think it's a real one. I then managed to take out Gengar with Fiery Wrath, from Houndoom as she brings in her Dark-type Sil Valley. I decide to bring in my Mega Blaziken and just spare my Houndoom to take down the Sil Valley with High Jump Kick. Spectre then comes out, I somehow survive an attack from this thing, hit back with a Blaze Kick and burn it. Next turn I can outspeed it because of my speed boost, but I miss my Blaze Kick and get taken out by Shadow Ball. So I bring in my Turtle who can survive another Shadow Ball and hit back with a Heat Wave to kill the Ghostly Horse. His Mars Shadow then takes me out, so I go into some Flora to hit a Fiery Dance, but it has a Focus Sash, so it survives with 1 HP and kills me with close combat, but then I bring in my Galarian Rapidash, get hit with a Shadow Sneak, kill it with Fire Lash, the final Pokemon is Aegislash, and I also manage to one-shot this Sword and Shield with Fire Lash. Let's go to the final Elite Four member, Lance the Dragon Master, and see if we can beat him with our Fire Types too. I decide to fight Lance's team with his Aerodactyl, because it's way easier to take him down than his guard chomp. So I'm going to be leading off with my bulky turtle and kill it with two infernos. The next Pokemon is his dragon.
Dragonite, which I'm also going to be hitting with an Inferno in order to burn it and do some chip damage. I then bring in Charizard and go for the Heat Wave because I know he's going to be switching into his Primal Dialga. I do about half of his HP. I then hit a couple more Heat Waves while he went for Rest and Sleep Talk, but ultimately he took me down with Roar of Time. I then went to do my Speed Lord, Blaziken, and High Jump Kicked the Dialga into Oblivion. His Dracovish then came out, who also survived a High Jump Kick and then hit back with a Ficious Rent to take me down. So I swapped in my Galarian Rapidash, which is Choice Bandit, so I went for Play Rough to take down Dracovish, but then the Mel Metal came out. So I can't hit this with Play Rough because it won't do any damage. So I decided to swap in Hound Doom, take a double Iron Bash to the face, and then hit back with a Flamethrower, which also burned it. That burn damage was sadly not enough to take it out, but then I went into my Galarian Rapidash again, took it out with Play Rough, so that the next Dragon type Pokemon that would come out could also be hit with my Play Rough. That Pokemon was Salamence, so I hit it with my Play Rough. It did only about half of its health because of an Intimidate, and it then killed me with Double Edge. My Torkoal was then able to set up the Sun again, but then also died to Double Edge. But my Symphora now has the Chlorophyll, so he can outspeed the Salamence, kill it with Fiery Dance, and the final Pokemon is Dragonite again. This time he hits me with an Extreme Speed, but it doesn't even do half. My Fiery Dance finishes off Dragonite and also makes me win against Lance. One final battle before we become champion of Radical Red with fire types, so let's try and beat our boy Water with his basically full team of legendaries. Our rival here starts off with Feromosa, so I'll be leading with my turtle again and set up some stealth rocks. His Yveltal then comes out, so I have to go into my Galarian Rapidash who is able to hit one play rough but gets taken out by a Dark Hole and an Oblivion Wing. But I can then bring in Houndoom who can finish off Yveltal with Flamethrower. His Eternatus then kills my Houndoom with Sludge Bomb, so I have to bring out my speed boosted Blaziken who can Earthquake the Eternatus twice and finish it off. His Feromosa <laughs> is then trying to outspeed and kill me, but because of my speed boost, I outspeed and kill with a Blaze Kick. He then has a Primal Groudon who, despite paralyzing me, I can still hit with two Earthquakes. It doesn't quite kill, and we get taken out by Fire Punch. But my Charizard can finish off Groudon with Heat Wave. The next Pokemon, Metagross, also goes down to a Heat Wave. His last Pokemon is a Galarian Darmanitan who bashes my Charizard into the grave, so my Torkoal has to come in, Heat Wave it, and and win me the battle against water. Which means that we have now defeated Pokemon Radical Red with the fire type, and if I would have to choose my MVP of this entire run, it would have to be either Blaziken or Sunflora. So if you're going to be running a fire type team yourself, I would highly recommend using one of those two Pokemon. And as always people, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting this channel. If you want to help me out too, you can click the link in the description, it is always appreciated but not needed. And with that, out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.